I'm happy. Hell yes, dude. We're doing this. Episode 65 from everyone. I'm here with Liam. Is it Geary? Yes, Gary? sir. Geary. 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 Yes, sir. <laughs> Hell yes, dude. The goal is to learn something from everyone, and today you are my victim, my guy. Oh, I am God, excited victim. to pick your brain. Uh, everything Mortal Reminder. That is the goal today. We were talking about the new Mortal Reminder album I'm coming out to get into it. in a couple days. So I guess we're recording this a week before release, but yeah, as this comes out, it'll be right upon us. Yes, sir. I guess maybe most people will hear it once the album's already out. So... Let's celebrate that bad bitch. Anywhere uh, we <laughs> want to send people for like pre-orders. Anywhere we want people to go check it out. Like, what no, is the what the, is the first thing we want people to hear from it? The I mean, it's interesting because the initial plan was not to put out an album. We kind of just wrote a ton of songs, and we kind of had the mindset that we were just going to do singles all throughout the year. Mm-hmm. And then we booked the first show, and we were like, "Well, we don't want to like play to a show where people like don't know the music." So, fuck it. Album. So the show came first. <laughs> so yeah, it did. There. We kind of just like planned in our mind, like June first is like no matter what, that's gonna be the first show. And then like as we got closer, and like kind of based on the reception from the first couple songs, mm-hmm. we were like maybe we just like say fuck it and be that band to just drop a fucking album out of nowhere, no pre orders. It's really like kind of super DIY for the people. Hell yes. We didn't like go to a studio or anything to do it. You know, we did a lot of the grunt work on our own and that's kind of like the pride in it so we just want people to enjoy it you know what just oh, yes. check it out when it's out that's all i ask is this i kind of use like the shadow of intent is always the band in my brain and i guess maybe i'm locally biased here but like it's something that started online and it seemed like it was like it's going to be online until there's a reason to go in person that's exactly that what kind happened. of y'all's motivation too yeah like i've been friends with nick and doug for a really long time and like the root of that friendship like isn't even really music um it's like video games honestly yeah. and We were friends for, you know, two years before we even talked about doing music together. And then I remember, like, we're on Discord one night. And Doug just, like, randomly started getting into this, like, phase of, like, he was just writing a lot and, like, streaming his, like, Logic session for the Discord. Hell yeah. And one of the songs, I was just, like, like, I was still in Degrader at the time. And he was still in Sirens at the time. And one of the tracks, I was, like, can I just, like, you know, get on this and, you know, that just like kind of was the seed hell yes planted in the soil that became mortal reminder and this is like 2020 2021 yeah i'd say 2021 was when i finally like put my voice onto something but all throughout like the pandemic and covid we were all gaming together yeah, yeah, yeah. i had just been like twitter friends with nick really and <laughs> a lot of people are he's a popular yeah yeah he online. is well i just thought he was funny as hell <laughs> yeah. and uh i also like knew he was a gamer but we hadn't like played anything yep. and I like got his league username off like a clip he posted on Twitter. I think it was like a Echo Pentakill. Shout out, <laughs> Nick. That was a great play. Um, added him, and one day during the pandemic, he was on, and he had like four out of five members in his team. I just joined, and Doug was there. Uh, Mike from Micro Relocate was in there. Hell yeah! And then I think. Uh, I can't remember who the other person was, but I just like played my ass off in that game. <laughs> I was like, yo, it was my first game with these dudes. Like, and they're all in bands. That what were game like, we talking? League of Legends, okay. of course. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know? Apologies. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. And uh, we just kept playing and then kept hanging out. And then like the friendship, like it's so strange that it really like blossomed just from like gaming together and then like transitioning into music, which then became Mortal Reminder. Damn. That is a, a very organic story of like, yeah, I feel like normally it's guys coming together of like, we have this common dream and y'all like, I feel like bands love to be like, no, we're friends first. And it's like, well, kind of, but you wouldn't hang out if you weren't making music together. Like, no, exa- I feel like that is how most groups work. And for there you guys, is. I, I have this like theory that like most bands are actually solo projects or like duo projects. Mm-hmm. There's usually like one or two dudes yep. that really kind of have like the mission and like the the product in mind or like the artistic vision or whatever. Yep. And then like you got a bunch of other dudes that are like, that sounds good to me. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm on board. You know what I mean? But I like both roles are valuable. Like you got to know what role you play on a team in, yep. in when I was in the greater, like I was very much like the guy with the artistic vision. And this time around, like that's more so Doug and, and Nick who kind of take charge of that. And I'm just like, yo, let me know when the songs are good and I'm cool with whatever. Yep. You know what I mean? I guess that team sport. Yeah, I think the I grew up an athlete and I feel like I've always used like sports as a way to like ingest stuff. And the more I'm like, mm-hmm. I feel like when I first got to music, it was like I was forcing it and like pigeonholing stuff just so I had some like reference. And the more I'm into it, the more I'm like, 
oh yeah, this is a team sport. Like we can't all be the, the goal way. scorer, and there has to be someone exactly. scoring goals. But if there's no one else on the team, then like that guy's fucked. He's too soft to do anything. I completely by himself. agree. I've also kind of viewed it at, through like a sport like window. Like I just thought of something the other day where I was like, when I practice, mm-hmm. like I'll just be driving in my car and I'll be like singing along to our songs, and I like thought of like something I would like say to like get people to start like swinging or whatever. And uh, I said to myself, I sound like my coach. <laughs> like, who wants it more? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. have heart, some shit like that. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, I'm cursed. <laughs> Practicing mosh calls in the car. That's sick. Next time I'm in like standstill traffic, I'm going to look around and see. You like, want to be a little focused. prepared. I've definitely like got to a red light and someone's like looked at me and been like, what the hell is this guy doing? But that's like my safe spaces in the car. I'll just go for a long drive, yep. turn it all the way up. I don't really like practicing with the band. Plus, we all live far away from each other, so we don't really have that leisure to jam all the time. Yeah. So I kind of got to like get the reps in on my own. You know what I mean? I know coming together has been hard for you guys, and I want to use that to segue into the music videos here. So I know uh, the story I'm most interested in here is for Stand Aside. I've seen you guys alluding that you changed the song of the video on the day of the video. Yeah. And so to me, it's like, yeah, if y'all are all coming five hours to a middle ground, like it's insane to do all that planning and all that it must have taken to get you in the same room and then go audible. <laughs> like, no, for sure. So this kind of goes hand in hand with like the whole it wasn't meant to be an album at this point in time. Um, so we did the first two songs, uh, The Gravest Sin and Thorn, Mm -hmm. and then that was going to be, like, the first, basically we were going to, like, drop singles, but they were going to be collections, like, three, four song collections, so it was going to be those two, and then going into this song, Suffer to Love, um, which was going to, which was going to be our second video, it's actually our third video, so by the time this is out, that video will have been out, but yes. that was originally the second video that we had planned, and, and then like another song, um, which ended up not even being a single at all, because in the middle of this process, Doug wrote Stand Aside, he like, he literally had a dream that we played this breakdown, and then he woke up and he texted me, he's like, I just had a crazy dream, we played like the hardest breakdown of all time. I'm going to go track it and post it on Twitter. And he did. <laughs> and then, like, we were like, damn, this is fucking crazy. F- finish this right now. I literally walked across the street to his house and, like, sat there with him and was like, no, no, no. You need to finish this, like, right now. Like, this needs to get done. He sends it into the group chat. And, like, we were just like, we just knew. We were like, no, we, <laughs> ha- we have to finish this song, like, in three days and shoot the video for this song. So... The concept of the video completely changed. The song completely changed. Everybody had to learn the song in time to shoot the video. Uh, Josie, our director, was like so on board with it too. And he was like, it's almost like he knew we were going to do this because we had a totally different concept plan originally for the video. And then like we told him, we sent him the track. He's like, oh, no, I know exactly what I need to do. Like there's never really been a point with him where like, we kind of had to like lead him. Like he mm-hmm. always comes with like the eye. Like we just sent him the track, and then he thinks it all up ahead of time. It's it's honestly impressive because I can't believe like how many consistent ideas he's had yeah. throughout the years. Like I'm just starting to work with Josie, mm-hmm. but Nick and Josie have been working with him for like ten plus years now, I think. And he's just like the most creative visual artist I've ever had the pleasure to work with. And yes. like it was like so impressive, like. It was a green screen video. That was what the new concept was. And and like I said, we learned it the day of. We got there, freezing cold. I think it must have been like January mm-hmm. when we shot the video. Um, and I think he said he films out of his garage. Yeah, we did so it's, all three outdoors. videos out of his yeah. garage. <laughs> um, and yeah, we just did. We didn't even know what it was going to look like. We just were like, okay, you got this. We'll get in front of the screen. We shot it. And then like his turnaround rate is crazy too. He's like, yeah, I'm going to have a cut for you in like three days or something like that. It's always crazy. I'm always like, what? And then like the video blew my mind because like that whole like backdrop and everything, he built that. It's not like some thing that he like got, like he literally like handcrafted it in Mm -hmm. Unreal Engine. He like hired a friend of his to do like the big creature. Godzilla thing. Yeah. Yeah. We got a bunch of different names for him. Aatrox, (laughs) Oryx, uh, Rost. He's got a bunch of, you know, golem ass type names. Hell and, yes. and he had somebody like craft that dude. Okay. So it's all like, like, again, as, like I said before, it's like super DIY. You know what I mean? Like we're not, 
outsourcing with any like crazy programs or anything. Like he's just doing all the work himself. It's I don't even know. I don't have a mind I'm for it. So like impressed that. with him. Yeah, as a as a much smaller music video director, he seems mm -hmm. like a good model to look at. And I think what I love about the videos is like how different they are. I think my one like I've got into green screen. I'm uh, yeah very much into it at the moment. But I think my dilemma with it is I think bands tend to like only do that, or they pick like only green screen or only practical. Yeah, yeah. And I love that you guys have like the the yin and the yang there of like yeah this crazy uh, green screen like virtual world created in this hellscape, and there's also this very practical, simple but beautiful like sword thing that uh, I'm laughing recently in the last couple of days with a video popping up that is uh, unfortunately similar. Um, it's all right. It but is what it is. <laughs> any good idea is gonna get taken. I've, uh, I've I've heard the industry described as a race to be in second place, and I think that's a that's perfect funny. example of it. That's very true. Of, yes, no one wants to take the risk and do the thing first, but once the thing has succeeded first, we're yeah, we're going to see a lot more nights. In yeah, the well, there's, times. there's a lot of swings and there's a lot of misses, but when you hit and you're the person that's kind of like ahead of the pack on something like that, yes. like yes, boom, and know, I it's usually uh, the result. I won't go take the tangent too far, but that's my one fear watching this Kendrick and Drake thing unfolding is like, we're going to see woes me and issues like oh, popping no, up everywhere. No, like, no. There's going to be so many imposters because Kendrick and Drake must be making unlimited money off of this. Like win or lose. Oh, the like, streams are going up. Unbelievable amounts. Yeah. And like, it seems like they're just further indoctrinating their own fan bases. And like, I don't think this thing ends with any real consequence. I think it's just, yeah. No, a, I mean, a moment of lore. I think it's, I thought it was pretty funny that like you could tell that like, they had like they went in and recorded like three tracks at a time rather mm -hmm. than just like oh he said this well I gotta go back in the studio yeah. like they were ready like oh I actually have a fucking catalog to unleash on you yes uh, there's a, a it wouldn't surprise me if up until like a month ago or a couple weeks ago it was premeditated and then it just kind of like got out of hand but I wouldn't be surprised if there's some middleman manager who's like hey guys probably there's a bajillion well, weren't there dollars rumors that that's what what was me was doing do you think that they were talking to each other at all. I, I mean, I don't, I feel like I'm too close. Like, I don't know any of the people involved, but it feels like I am one or two steps away from them that, yeah, I have no idea. And I'm scared to speculate on people I sort of know, but it wouldn't surprise me. It doesn't seem impossible. That, I don't like, know what to think. I, I wonder if like some people were, but most people weren't. I would assume that there's two camps and there is like a quarterback in each camp. And those two people probably aren't talking. Like I said, team leader. Yes. There's always that one but guy. There's going to be some other people in the middle who are like, yeah, I'll be on the song. I don't really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah fuck yeah, those sure. guys. But who cares about those guys? Interesting. Uh, on a much smaller scale, uh, <laughs> there's a band called Half Hearted in the area. And there's a band called Set Sail at Sunrise that was also around at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was one of those, yeah, one band breaks apart and local band becomes two bands kind of things. And the two bands have beef. And they did put out songs at each other. And I'm bringing oh, this up. Tough. Because, who won? Uh, I don't know. I guess Half Hearted was around longer, so I guess they won. Good. I <laughs> but, like those dudes. Those are yeah, good dudes. All great dudes. They're, I yeah, would all, hope that they would win. All my friends are involved in this. But the reason I bring it up is because that's a great example of, yes, there were basically two guys writing songs, and the guys in the middle were like, that's kind of funny that you're writing this song about us. Like, there yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I assume that, yeah, transpires, and I guess to bring this full circle, it's like, I think in the next six months, we're going to see more people going at Ronnie Radke, and more people <laughs> trying to pick that fight and go like, it worked for them. Maybe I, I can 1A and 1B. It's peculiar to think about, because some people see it like as opportunistic. Yep. Like, um, like, oh, if I get involved in this beef, it's going to like look good for me. It's mm -hmm. going to look good for me to be on like the right side. And they're not totally wrong. No, they're not. That's why I'm like, not expressing like disdain towards it because it, yeah. like I can understand it. I think I'm know? on like the super conservative side of what I choose to put online of like, I just, I'm so scared of saying the wrong thing. And I think my sense of humor is pretty dark and fucked up. Like <laughs> I just, I don't want to say something out of context that my friend would know is me, but a stranger would look at it and be like, Hey, yo, what yeah, the yeah, fuck yeah. is this dude on? So I think I air like, yeah, I do everything in my power to not get involved in this, but I think there is value in getting involved in this. I think like there is value in having your name in the zeitgeist and like, yeah, up until it backfires on you. Like, it seems like it's like, yeah, there is so much good to be had by being in the conversation. And whatever that involvement looks like, I think is kind of unimportant in that matter. For sure. Um, which is, I guess, the dog shit part of being in a band. But more importantly, mortal reminder. <laughs> get back on track here. It all um, comes full circle, you know? It does. Um, yes, Josie Rules. Those music videos are so sick. Uh, I'm making sure I don't have any more thoughts in my brain that I want to touch on there. Uh, I think Scotty's the other person of this. So yeah, I, think I was actually going to say, Scott was also super clutch in the moment where Scott like is very like on call for us. Like Again, yeah. we, we don't go out and record with him. We we do all the recording and writing on our own. And he does all the mixing and mastering like through Discord live with us. And he walk like what's cool about the experience is that not rules. only is he super talented, but he walks us through the whole process. So not to say that like mm -hmm. any of us could get on the computer and replicate it, but at least we like know what's going on and like mm -hmm. 
any type of stylistic choice he makes in the mix, like he has like a lot of ideas and uh, we give him like the room to like express those, like not everything that he brings to the table, we're going to bite on, but we allow him to like, kind of like have that moment That's where he's key. like, I yeah. have this idea. Like, can we mm-hmm. go for that? So when we did the stand aside thing, like we called him up and we were like, we need you tonight. And he was there and he got it done. And also like, as we went through the mixing process, like, we wrote so many songs and we were kind of like, again, we didn't write it like to be an album. It just over time, like became an album rightfully. So I mm-hmm. think, and like in the mixing process, every song, like we were progressing as writers and Scotty was also progressing as a producer. And like the mix that you're going to hear on the final album, like if you compare like the gravest sin is such a perfect example, like the guitar tone, literally sounds like a fucking chainsaw on the final versus just like your standard like heavy ass guitar tone like he yeah. he made leaps where we would be like go back to all the other <laughs> songs and do that now so there was a lot of like backtracking like some songs not that they went through like different versions of like writing or anything but just little tips and tricks that yeah. Scotty learned along the way that he applied to older tracks that he did was super impressive and was what really the final piece that like made it a cohesive album and not just a collection of 10 songs, you know? Yeah, I think that's a really interesting puzzle because I assume starting with the singles is, yeah, it's it's a, a modern music. It's like modern music is not albums. Modern music is these singles. And it's interesting to have that problem of like you were trying to create three or four different three song trilogies or so. Mm-hmm. And then I assume then part two is like, you want to make those unique. And then you have to take these things that were intended to be unique and then reconvene them back into middle ground. Yeah, we had to like find like a common element. Mm-hmm. Um I guess in a way, I feel like that might have been me. Like I might have been the common element because, like the the lyrical themes and like just mm-hmm. the way that I approach like my voice on the tracks is kind of like the one thing that is consistent through all the tracks. And kind of there was a lot of people that I like share the music with, like before we even put it out, especially older Degrader members. And you know, I uh, I'm still very good friends with like the original Degrader members, Jerry and Corey. And I remember showing it to them. And they were like, what you did with Degrader was awesome. But at the same time, like, we're listening to this and, like, this is what you were supposed to be on the whole time. Like, this is suited for you. Like, this music, and shout out Doug, because it very much so is, was written for me to be on it. You know, yeah. I mean? like, I attack the songs in a way that, like, it, it fits like a glove. You know what I mean? Like, I want to be on these songs. I want to, like, express my creativity through it, you know? Hell yeah. It's exciting to hear something, like, confident about it. I think normally on the precipice of release, there's this, like, uh, oh no kind of moment and it sounds like you're very like eager of like no this is this is it um, people need to hear this yeah and before a, we refreshing. put it out we we kind of knew not yeah. in like a cocky way but just like we felt like uh, music go through goes through cycles and like mm-hmm. we said like you know it's a race to be second and in a way this is like a way to be first the second time the race has happened does that make sense yeah, yeah, yeah. we're not necessarily yep. In second, but we kind of just figured, like, you know, music has gone through phases. Mm -hmm. You know, we went through, like, you know, techno EDM type of metalcore with, like, the attack, attack, like, rise core and whatnot. And then, like, as time went on, like, you had, like, the Chicago era, like, usher in with, like, villains, Mm -hmm. sworn in, uh, barrier, like, that kind of style emerged. And then we kind of, like, ushered in like slam metalcore like varials was very big knock loose is big and then yeah. we kind of thought like well we like bands like volumes and mashuga and stuff and there's just been like a big pocket for that and then we did that but we were like mm-hmm. we need to put like the kind of modern spin on it like we really enjoy like super heavy bands so how can we do that but also you know be badass yeah. and we just kind of figured like now is the perfect time and when scott finally sent like back the first mix we were like damn like this is kind of sick this is sick where does the low file feature work into this? So I think that's a yeah cool way to just add video more games, flavors. baby. It yeah. always goes back to video games. Mortal reminders for the gamers. Uh, Ty is a fantastic Overwatch player. Okay, Baptiste man, he's solid. And we were just gaming with him. We wrote the song and we were just like talking, like who would be a cool feature. We had thought of a bunch of different vocalists, and I was kind of like, what if we did somebody that's not a vocalist? And then mm-hmm. kind of thought like, oh, it'd be sick to get Ty to like scratch on a song, and he was down. And uh, yeah, so like, yeah. kind of just happened. That worked. That's so cool. And I think I'm a big fan of you. Of like, yeah, we've heard a lot of features, and it's fun to let the vocalist go rip ass and like, yeah, get to be special and flex a little bit. But I'm with you that it's yeah, it's fun to hear 
different elements come in. I think it's a new way to get people interested and engaged that wouldn't have happened otherwise. Yeah, I want to do more stuff like that too. I have a couple ideas. I want to really get like a guitarist feature mm -hmm. on. I remember when I was younger, I was like a big fan of Event Sevenfold. And of they, course. Good uh, Charlotte, The River. Yes, yeah, that's the one with M Shadows and Sinister <laughs> yes, Gates. I yep. thought that shit was sick. Yes, it is. I would like to do something like that. That shit holds up. Yep. <laughs> I'll die on that river. Yeah, that shit is fucking awesome. Nothing they've really done in the past like five years has been worthy of listening to, but sure. other than that, sure. Band's fucking awesome. So yeah, just like different things. I mean, it's really kind of about like our our community, like our like friendship circle. Like our friends are on the songs, you know? Yep. I and like if I feel like so many times like I've kind of like wanted like a bigger artist on a track because you know you think like, oh well their fans are gonna listen to my yeah. it doesn't really ever work that way. Sometimes yeah. it does. But more often than not, it really doesn't. Yeah. So I'm it's like, why don't I would rather like just get my homies on the track. They're gonna want to. They're gonna do a better job and want to do it more anyway. So why <laughs> wouldn't I? A hundred percent. And yeah, that's what you want. As someone who wants to be a part of it and wants to help promote it, and like I feel like the promotion part is almost what you pay for. And when you're paying whatever, I don't even know. It's a good vocalist. Like I'm trying to think of a name to hire. Get Will Ramos on a track. It's probably twenty thousand dollars right now or something. Some, like, it's it's I, probably I, a good amount. Yeah. Like I I know back in the day the Landon Tours feature was a thousand, and I'm sure now it's five or ten or something. But like probably. Yeah, that's a huge investment that could have go into so many other things. It probably would go a lot further in YouTube ads. So it's like if you're probably. paying all that money, then you better be getting a good service. And you're right. Probably what you're getting is someone who is happy to make a little extra money, which we all need. There's nothing wrong with that. But yeah, your friend's gonna be a better fit for that job. Yeah. And I would feel better like on some shit where like, oh, thanks for hopping on that track. Let me hook you up with some cash rather than be yeah. like, How, what do you charge? What's your rate yes. for you to do 30 seconds on my song? Mm -hmm. It just feels like inauthentic, like to be. It feels like I'm hiring like a session vocalist. Yes. Rather than like, yep. it's not like a feature. And I think the issue there is you run into people who are doing features like in bunches and then you end up with like six months. Yeah. Of this person yeah. Coming out on. 10 no, songs. for sure. For sure. We. <laughs> We talked about that too, where we were when we were like thinking of di different vocalists. Like there were names that were thrown out, and be like, "That would be sick," but that dude but, just did ten yep. features last <laughs> month. Yes, you know what I mean. It's like we get it. He needed a new car. His mortgage was due. <laughs> like I understand why this happens, and I'm very. It's happy. hard out here being a musician if you're a full time dude. Uh, you know, a hundred percent. And for the, yeah, I don't want to be critical of people. I'm happy that they can make a, yeah, can make money doing that. But yes, as a band, I think you have to be very careful buying into those and being aware of what you guys are buying into. And I think yeah, the, for sure. the beauty here is that you guys are all coming with like a lifetime of expertise. And I think maybe the the beauty here is like the other bands in the past had to go wrong for this to then work and you can take those lessons with you. But yeah, there is a lot of learning that has already been done. Yeah, for sure. Everything led to this. I feel like the past experiences have helped us bypass a lot of like uh, growing pains that you have in the beginning. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like, I, I mean... There's really there really isn't even any goals to like be a big band or do anything super special. It's it's purely just like a passion project that has seen a little bit of success and that we're excited about. But like, you know, just go having been through Sirens, Degrader, and um, you know, Nick was in Nightmares for a little bit. Like mm -hmm. we just you just learn. You just learn through experience. I and instead of like being sour about how things went, I can just apply it to what I'm doing right now. And like I think the biggest thing that I learned from my experience with Degrader was I, there was definitely a point where I lost sight of like the fun and the passion. And it mm -hmm. wasn't even about like having fun. It was about like, oh, what's the next thing I can do that can get me ahead? It was like always like thinking about it like in a career mindset or yeah. like thinking about like how I can make it or make it work. And like to a point where it like just wasn't even fun anymore for anybody involved, you know? Yeah. Um, and at the end of it, that was like kind of like, the realization that we had where we were like, we're not even having fun anymore. Like, mm -hmm. why don't we all go on to do things that are fun for us, you know what I mean? Rather than just like force it. I frequently chat on here about how I'm self-employed, so I make videos full time. And to me, it's like, that's great. That's beautiful. But my fear is always like, if, if this thing grows enough, it becomes a nine to five again, where if yeah. you're self-employed for long enough, it becomes rigid. And then I'll end up with people under me. And now I'm doing less time of actually editing video and more time of instructing people and for whatever, sure. leading a business more so than being the creator. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. Bands fall in that same problem. Like if you're in a band for long enough, you almost forget of like, hey, we started this to get away from all that bullshit. Like, no, for sure. Let's not worry for about sure. yeah, paying a manager 10% and when the teacher's going to get done and which design. It's like, yeah, keep things simple as long as they can be simple. And I'm sure managers and all the other stuff is helpful and relevant when it needs to be. 
But I think a lot of people get caught up in all these, yeah, bullshit steps of like, oh, if you do this, yeah. then it's legit. And it's like, no, it's legit when people start listening. And yeah. everything before that is kind of inconsequential. Yeah, um, I agree. In another sense, like, we're all, like, older and more mature and, like, things like labels and managers like don't have the same like sheen to us as they did when I was 21. Mm -hmm. Um, we did have one conversation with a label that was interested in us and, um, it was a very like down to earth conversation and and the ref and the label was like very respect, uh, uh, respective of like how we felt about labels. And like, he wasn't like trying to like, you know, gas it all up to be this like super, you know, game changing experience where like you guys are gonna be, you guys are awesome. You guys, I think you guys could be the next big thing. Like yeah. you'll be touring with this band. Like it was very like, yeah, yeah. hey, this is like kind of what we would expect from you, and this is what we could do for you. And mm -hmm. ultimately, at the end, we were like, I think we're just like all set for right now. We're enjoying what we're doing on our own. But like, it's nice to know that like we can go. When I was younger, like that's how I ended up in bad positions where there would be people yep. that like I kind of like idolized or looked up to or respected, mm -hmm. and you know they paint a picture for you and when you're in your young 20s like you'll believe anything if you think it's going to get you one step closer to playing to huge crowds consistently yep. or doing the tours that you dreamed of yep because through this whole experience there's been like so much of that where like you know i i was in degrader i joined when i was 18 i'm 29 now so the past 10 years have just been like kind of evolving through music and like mm -hmm. there's so many moments where like bands that i listened to in high school like i'm getting to like meet those dudes and now some of them are my friends and like but at the same time like like I said, the sheen has worn off and like not everyone is yeah. as cool as I thought they were going to be. Yep. And like the whole industry in and of itself, like isn't all it's cracked up to be like, mm -hmm. there's still a lot of sacrifice and hard work to be made. Like you're commenting on like, yeah, we are self-employed. And like, in a sense, that means you got to work like 10 times harder because like you're going mm -hmm. like you're simultaneously working with and yet against everyone around you because like we're all creating and like, while we all want to like support each other as bands, like at the same time, like if you're really in it for like a career mindset, like you want your band to blow up before anybody else's. And yep. like kind of a lot of people have that like chip on their shoulder. I think transitioning yep. into a passion project like Mortal has allowed me to step away from that and has allowed me in hand to like truly be optimistic and happy for my friends' bands when they get big opportunities. And I'm no yep. longer like, jaded and be like well, why why didn't i like get that tour you know what i mean like mm -hmm. i don't ever have to feel that way again because i'm not worried about it like whatever's meant for me will come to me and yes. like i can just be like happy for anybody else that's like gonna have like a, a good experience or it outcome also makes the end product so much better like I'm, I'm sure as you're sitting down there would have been a point that 22 year old liam sits down and goes what is the heaviest breakdown? How do I write the sickest mosh? Oh, there is. And it's like it's you're you're competing in that moment instead of just like letting Liam like make something mm -hmm. that sounds cool. And we call it like viral moment baiting. We're like perfect. Yes, yes. So yes. a big like viral moment in heavy 100%. music was uh when Lauren Shore like dropped that first mm -hmm. like track with Will, Will Ramos. Like we all know the one. I forget what it's called, but um, to the hellfire. To the hellfire. Right. I feel like after that. Oh, yeah. uh, a, there was like a lot of like, what's the next TikTok viral moment in heavy mm -hmm. music? And like some of that, like, uh, it's got to be organic. It has to just kind of happen on its own. But yeah. uh, you can, there's some moments where I like hear something. And I'm like, oh, they're doing too much. Mm -hmm. They're doing way too much to like hit the viral moment. It's just got to happen. Yes. Yes. And I agree with you that, yeah, when you, when you force it, you don't end up with that. And I think uh, who knows what's happening in that studio. Maybe Will knew the whole time it was a joke, but I, I assume it was a sound that he made and everyone was kind of like, yeah, what the fuck? Like, do that for real. Like, I, I almost assume it was a joke that became real and then took yeah, off. Yeah, something like that. A lot of, I feel, it felt like an organic moment because he had just joined the band and like, Lorna Shore has been a band for a long, long yeah. time. So to see yeah. them finally get their flowers it, it, through a moment like that where they like took the spotlight, that was mm -hmm. very cool. Yes. But yeah. I just, I find there's a little bit of disingenuous everyone actions else. when everyone yeah. else is like trying to chase that like viral mm -hmm. moment. Yep. And it's tough. And I... I don't know how to, I think, I guess, the, to personalize it in the podcast, it's like, I should be putting out the clips of us talking about Lorna Short. Like, I, I would do better to not just put out the clip, but also to have a bad opinion on Lorna Short right now. And to put yeah, out yeah, to be, like, controversial. <laughs> yeah. And like we like, said, it, there's, like, somewhat of a benefit to, like, go against the grain at times. And I have made a, a real good effort to put out things that, like, if it's criticizing anyone, it's me or my guest. Like, if we're talking shit about each other or ourselves, yeah, like, yeah, fair yeah. game, but, like, I don't want to sure. be <laughs> criticizing, tearing down something else, but, like... I'm aware that that puts somewhat of a ceiling on how much this grows. You could be and getting like rage reactions, which would drive your views up like huge. 100%. You know what I mean? like, yep. 
uh, yeah, it's been an interesting problem of like, I'm empathizing with bands who, yeah, not that you guys are going through the exact same thing, but there is some version of it. It's like, there are, there are 10 words in the English language right now that it's like, if you put one of them in your song, like you're oh, going to yeah, catch yeah. a lot of attention. And for sure. For there's sure. scales and there's yeah, ups and downs and different people who might be interested or offended by it. But like, yeah, there are buttons you could push at any moment and it's like, fuck, when is it? Yeah. When do you push that button or how, how especially, close do you push that especially if you're not a person that like consistently pushes the buttons. Mm-hmm. I feel like I've never really seen you. No, yeah. If, I'm too scared to If you the have like some Twitter beef with someone, <laughs> I'd want to come defend you, man. I would be like, yo, get away from him. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Dude, uh, one story that I have never, I don't think I've ever told on here, but I, you reminded me of in that moment, and I would love to share it with the universe. Please. Uh, at one of my first local shows, like I, so I get into this in 2016, and I'm just showing up at shows with cameras and taking pictures of any local metal band that will let me in the VFW with Yeah, me. yeah, yeah. So we're at one show, uh, and like crowd killing is popping off, normal Connecticut shit. We're big in our beat down air at that mm-hmm. point in time. And this dude pulls pulls me aside. He's in a local band that I won't say the band's name because I yeah don't want to put anyone on blast sure, here. Sure. But a local band that definitely Connecticut people would know and was beloved to our area. A hardcore yeah beatdown band. And one of the guys pulls me over with like his brothers and a couple guys and is like, "Yo, if anyone in there ever gives you a problem, like just let me know and I'll take care of it. And they will never bother you again." There you go. And it was one of those like, dude, I don't know what the hell. Like as, <laughs> in hindsight, it's like I think I almost want to be like, "Oh, he was kidding." Like he was like, "Yeah, talking up." And it's like. I don't think he was. Like, I'm almost positive that I still could call him and be like, hey, yo, here's the address. Some people are like that, man. (laughs) Which is so fucked up. It's good to have a friend like that. It's always stuck with me. Like, I don't know how I got on his good side, but bless, thank goodness I am on his good side. Maybe you're good to talk a little bit of shit then. A you got the bit. jail, like out of jail free card right there? A little bit. Maybe you should run your mouth a little bit. Uh, I'm good. (laughs) I'm good. Maybe you need to get Racky on the podcast, bro. I should. And just... (laughs) <laughs> that's, that's the move, dude. I wouldn't, I'm, dude. He's pretty jacked. I'm sure. He's pretty fucking big, bro. I I, I would love to hear his take on I don't I think, like, uh, he's been vilified to such a degree that I, I I don't know. I don't, I guess I don't believe people are evil, and I recognize that's flawed in uh, my own, yeah, suburb privilege, I guess. For so sure. Like, but, like, I believe there has to be a, a heel in there and some, like, human who's aware yeah, of the like heel a char- Yeah, there's, like, a character. I think, uh... And that is an interesting person to me, if we could ever crack that show. Yeah. and get I, I don't think you ever could, though. I'm, I don't think I'm the person who will. <laughs> Somebody will, maybe, over time. But, Some, like, yeah. definitely, I feel like, uh, you know, the community, like, kind of bestows, um, like, goodness and badness on, on different people. And some people, like, kind of, like, lean into that mm-hmm. heel character. Mm-hmm. There's definitely a few of them. Mm-hmm. And, like... I think people don't really understand that, like, them leaning into that is, like, definitely perpetuating them way further. Yep. 100%. Yes. As I as I do this more, I become more aware of, like, oh, I'm – I do obviously do my best to be myself here. But I'm aware that I am becoming 1% of a character of who I was on episode for one. For sure. For like, sure. Uh, that is totally natural. And so then as I go, okay, this is me doing this one hour a week on a very small scale – if I'm living this life every day and arenas full of thousands of people, yeah, I'm gonna keep doubling down on whatever that thing is, and eventually you'll end up. Yeah, I'll end up for so the bit. far away. Yeah. It's a bit. It's you a know? bit. Yep. Yeah. Um, I had a good philosophy teacher when I was in high school that kind of we had a topic where we were basically saying everybody wears a collection of masks. Mm-hmm. So when you're here and you're like doing your episodes with your guests, like yep. you have a certain mask that you put on, and then mm-hmm. I'm gonna leave in an hour or so, and you're gonna take that mask off and wear a different mask when you're on your own, but then you're going to go to, you know, a party or a hangout or something, put a completely different mask on. But at the same time, like, are you, are you one of those personas or are you a collection of all of them together? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm only going to know a certain you like that. You're only going to show me when I'm around, you know what I mean? You could be a completely different person around somebody else, but are you not you when you're around me or are you just like a version of yourself or a, a percentage of yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I think the percentage is the the part that's maybe the most flattering and the one that I would like to believe, and I don't know if it's the most accurate <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're like, yeah, damn, I'm an asshole around some people. Is that me all the time? Yeah. You know what I mean? Am I just a dickhead? <laughs> Definitely, yeah. I can think of a couple people who would argue yes, but you, you win and some, me you both, lose so some. I get it, I get it. <laughs> Hell yes, my man. Uh, album comes out. Is there uh, a song on it that you want people to start with? Is there a place? Yeah, where as, as the album is out, as people are consuming it, how do you want people to do it just one through ten straight through is there a song that is the one people should start with what do you what do you hope for, for no definitely to go one through ten but then go through one through ten again and yep. then 
go through one through ten again. Hell yes. Maybe do it a couple times. Hell yes. Um, I don't know. I I bounce around. I bounce around it all the time. I'm still very much like enjoying the fruit of my own labor with the mm-hmm. record. Like I love listening to it. I believe very firmly that like you need to be in your own favorite band. We're creating the music that we thought like, oh, no one's making this, and I want to mm-hmm. listen to it, so I'm going to make it. So I kind of go through phases where you know I listen to it all the way through. Then sometimes I listen to it like I have a playlist that's like you know the order of the set that we have planned. Um, and then I have times where I just like listen to like a three song block. The uh, track six through eight is a great three song block. Okay, I love that. It's a good three trilogy. Song. Yep, it is. Which was originally supposed to be one of the trilogies that we were going to drop. So it's almost kind of like coupled like that <laughs> with different tracks sprinkled in. Throughout. Hell yes. You know? Hell yes. And how does this compare to like the Degrader releases? So obviously this is not your first album, not your first release, but it's a different one. It's a different group of guys. It's, you've had time to reflect and grow from those past experiences. Yeah. How does this compare to a week before some of the more recent Degrader releases? Mm. That's a good question. Um, especially since my role in both of those bands is entirely different. Where yeah. Degrader, um, I kind of went from like a co-captain spot to the captain spot. And, you know, I was doing a bulk of the writing for Degrader. I genuinely have not written a single song for Mortal Reminder that anybody's going to hear anytime soon. That's not to say that I haven't had input or constructive criticism, but I also recognize Doug's talent for songwriting, and um, I let him do his thing, and I like trust him. He wrote, actually, way more songs than needed for an album. I think uh, upwards of like 25 songs, (laughs) some that I didn't even finish listening to. Straight up. And like he's such a good sport about it too. He'll send a track to the group chat or whatever. And I will get through 30 seconds and I will say, No, thank you. Try again. And he will. And he doesn't like I don't know if I would have the mental fortitude. Yeah, I get super I, attached. I yeah. But I think it's because he kind of is like a workhorse. Like mm-hmm. he he will go back and write another song. So that kind of really allowed me to be selective and like, yeah. you know, I think we wrote around 20-ish, give or take a couple songs. Then I put vocals on 13 to 15, and then we like selected 10. And uh, and everything that's been written, and there are there are songs I've written, and there are songs that Nick has written, um, nothing is like off the table. It's always, let's come back to that at another time. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think. There's one song on the record. I'm trying to think of which one it is. I think it might be Medusa that's gone through like a lot of different iterations and like at one point like wasn't going to be a song that we were going to put out, but then went through like a random iteration where I think uh, Doug just like changed up a pattern or something. Mm-hmm. And we were like, oh, no, back in back in the program, I'm going to hit the studio tomorrow or whatever and, and get it done. So, you know, in comparison to like Degrader, where I was like doing a lot of the work and, yeah, you know, just taking on a completely different role, I feel... I feel like I'm able to appreciate it more now. I'm not as stressed. And again, like like we said, I was like thinking about it way too much towards the end of Degrader where I was like really pressuring myself to like write a good record and mm-hmm. to write things that people would enjoy and not just like allowing myself to like express. And I think also a big a big part of the whole process is that we did it ourselves this time. And the last two records I've done were at Graphic Nature with Matt Guglielmo, who's an awesome producer, and I had a badass time every time I've been in that studio with him. But something about doing all the vocals alone Mm -hmm. at my own house and, like, being able to, like, criticize myself. And there were also times that I would, like, stream my recording process in the Discord and, like, the guys would listen to me. Um, I really kind of just was allowed to be in the pocket and just kind of, like, work through ideas my writing process is like i do it there when it's time to do it like i don't really write too much in advance i don't like have like a pen and paper every now and then i'll like think up something i'll put it down on my phone but really like most of the magic happens when i'm like there in the booth you know at my setup about to do it and like i'll work through sections Mm -hmm. times and times over again until i'm like oh that was it like even words and I also like to track in a way that's like I like to get a lot into one take, whereas a lot of vocalists and like a lot of other processes yeah. I've done would be like, you know, line by line or mm-hmm. like, 
you know, some people even do like sh- like word word word. Yeah, Tr- yeah. truthfully, some it's people do. So minute, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I feel like you would kind of lose that like rawness. Like, mm-hmm. and a lot of the bands that I like to listen to are different than the bands that Nick and Doug like to listen to, and I feel like that's that's a big like uniqueness to Mortal. Where like they like a lot of, a lot of the more like genty bands or the more like polished metalcore bands, and I like a lot of the more like hardcore leaning type bands like Dying Wish or mm-hmm. like Vatican was big for me. I really liked Vatican. Um, stuff like that, like a little more raw. Yes. That's kind of my style. So you hear that reflect like in my vocal delivery, but then over this like kind of like process, like super tight, like to the grid type of instrumental. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a unique process from Degrader. They're two completely different bands. It kind of bums me out when people say, you know, oh, this is like Degrader 2.0 because I don't think it, I don't really, the only similarity is my voice. And even then, like I'm doing different things that I wouldn't have done yeah. on Degrader. It's yeah. still me. But they're different. Yeah, yeah I for sure. A, I think so. A low, low level criticism or not well thought out. I'm like, did you listen to it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know? Or are you just trying to be a dickhead for fun? Like, no, for real. And if you are, that's cool too. But like, let's. No, yeah, respect, respect. Yeah. <laughs> Power to you. Uh, what about getting back on stage? So I assume this is also then your first time getting back on stage since the degrader days. Like, is yep. that something that we're looking well, I've done forward some to? Karaoke. Uh, I guess my quick plug there is the show is Friday, May seventeenth in Rochester, New York. For, or sorry, I lied. That's the album. Yeah. The show is Rochester, New York, June first. Yep. Photo city music hall yes go to rochester new york have fun yeah <laughs> go yeah. out there um uh, but yes i assume it's your first time back on stage in in a good couple of years yeah is that nerve-wracking is that exciting what is the what is the build up to that looking like dude it is actually a complete year since the last degrader show hell yeah okay so the last degrader show was june 2nd last year damn unintentional almost, yeah unintentional you'll never keep Liam Geary <laughs> off stage for 365 days damn. let it be a lesson hell yeah um I don't know what to think. I'm trying not to think about it too, too much because I don't know what to expect. I don't know if it's going to be fucking crazy. Um, some of the bands, Nightmares, just recently played their own headliner at the mm-hmm. same venue, and it was a packed out show. Hell yeah. So, you know. That's a good sign. I have good expectations, yeah. but I, I, again, at the same time, whether there's five people or 500 people, you're going to get the same me. Hell yeah. Um, it's like a hometown venue that you've played a hundred times. Is because I feel like you're like New Hampshire, so I feel like Rochester is like a newer home. Too, I've but never played there ever, but they but Doug has like a ton of times. Okay. So that's their underground or Webster Underground is our yeah local yeah version. so to yeah. speak. Um, there's another one I'm trying to remember what it's called. I think it's Montage. Okay. Um, which is like a, another one that's like kind of like a bigger one. I guess that would be like their Palladium downstairs yep. versus their Palladium upstairs. Yeah yeah. yeah. So I'd say it's like kind of like an equal to Palladium upstairs uh, yeah. size venue. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll just see what happens when it happens. I know like we got a lot of friends flying out. That rules. Um, again, Mortal was birthed from like gaming with each other, and our entire Discord is gonna like fly out it's to a be Discord there. Comic Con. No, yeah. it seriously is. Like we're all gonna meet each other for the first time. It's a big fucking deal. That rules. I know. I get a really, land party, dude. I saw like, we are. On. We're gonna. We rented out an Airbnb. We are all gonna be there. We're gonna game. I don't know Bless. what we're gonna play because like gotta find something. Yeah, dude. I saw it was a clip of a bunch of guys who got like old like CRT TVs and like Xboxes oh, that's and we're fucking like awesome. like hardcore land yeah, party that's vibe. Sick. All I'm sure we'll shit. play like some Smash Bros or some got shit it. like yeah. that yeah. or like hit up an arcade. But like yeah. I'm think I'm more excited. Like the show will be awesome, but it's more about like the moment around it. The you reunion. know what I mean? Yeah. Or yeah. the union, I guess. Not the union. Read, yeah. The union. Uh, and to think about, you know, how I just like kind of became friends with Nick and Doug through chance and, you know, over time, like became friends with all these other people and formed like really strong connections with them. Like I talk to these people every day and it's not like they're just like my internet friends. They're my real friends. And to think that like the, the music was the piece that was going to bring us all together to hang out for the first time. And to also see, like, the reception that it's got from other people and to feel like we really have been this, like, organic, small hype train. Um, it's I'm just, like, excited to kind of be back at it. There isn't even plans for any more shows or, or touring or anything like that. We're very much taking it, like, we're going to do what we want to do when we want to do it, how we want to do it. I love it. It feels more like a full circle moment than, like, the start of a new circle. And I, I think, mm-hmm. yeah, as I was... Uh, what I was expecting you to say is that, yeah, this is the start of a new journey. It's great to start fresh. And it's a lot more of like, yeah, we've been through a lot. And it's great to come together with the boys and like celebrate at the end, which I think is a much better way to like start a new project as opposed to like, yeah, being on the edge of a mountain, being like, we're going to jump and who knows what's going to happen. Yeah. Where, yeah. There's something wholesome about the way this is all come together and approached and yeah, continue to grow. 
Yeah, for sure. It's exciting. It's like, it's such a unique experience for me where I really, like I've been in bands for yeah. so long, but really, even though it's like just forming and just becoming a new thing, I feel like we've like kind of skipped a lot of like, like I said, like the growing pain mm-hmm. stages and like yeah. kind of gotten right into like what's fun. And just like only doing fun things. Like if we don't think something is going to be cool or fun, like we like, there's no expectation for us to like go play a show that we don't think will be cool. Or like, I don't know, we may not put out music for another two years. Like who knows? Like it's entirely up to us. We could put it out another album in, in four months. Uh, if we <laughs> want to. We, yeah, it sounds we like have enough music yeah. and, and we could put out another album tomorrow <laughs> of songs just me and Nick wrote. You know what I mean? Like there's, the sky is the limit and it Hell really yeah. is like whatever we feel like we want to do, we're going to do. And I feel like playing a show June 1st. So <laughs> that's what we're going to do. That's so and sick, It's going to be fun. That's so sick, dude. I'm yeah, stoked to see that continue to grow. And yeah, stoked to you guys on all the success you've found and will continue to find. Yeah. Um, I want to touch base on the rugby thing quick. So we're yeah, getting yeah. close to our hour here. As I was yeah going through, I do a little research here, and I use that term very, very lightly ahead of the sure. show. But one of the things I stumbled upon is, yes, this Aardvarks FC rugby. Uh, and I would love to hear, yeah, adult rugby is like a... Adults play kickball. Adults play like beer league softball. Like adult rugby is a very different beast. It's peculiar. I'm getting a little too old to be doing it myself, (laughs) honestly. Um, So I played all throughout high school. Okay. And then um, I I like played a lot. I did like a lot of travel. Like I went over to Ireland to play for a little bit. That rule. Did your high school have it? Were you playing club? No, my high school had a team. Interesting. I went to to private school and like all the five private Catholic high schools in Massachusetts, they all have like long existing rugby programs Damn, so i was okay. like playing competitive rugby it wasn't like there's a lot of schools that are like we're gonna start a rugby team mm-hmm. and then they're like really bad for like many years to come yes like peep like the people who were older than me they knew how to play and like i learned very yeah. quickly early on so i played a ton up until like the first couple of years i was in college where i, I played club after i didn't mm-hmm. play in college but Where'd you go to college uh, community school. Oh, okay. And then uh, I decided to like drop out to like pursue the touring thing. And then like once I like really sunk my teeth into the band thing, like I stopped playing. And then um, this past year, I moved to Rochester. Not even for Mortal. I just moved there because like I I had to move and uh, wanted to be like where my friends are. So I kind of was like thinking going into it, like I need to find a thing that's like going to be my thing. Yep. I can't just like be waiting on like all my friends to like be around to like hang out with me like because yeah, yeah, yeah. I just moved. Yep. Um, so I was like, I'm just going to maybe play rugby again. So I just like looked up Rochester that's Rugby. So the Aardvarks came up and it's been quite the experience. I definitely like I'm a little bit of a has-been. <laughs> I don't like have the pep in my step anymore. And yeah. some of these dudes have been playing like consistently and like <laughs> some of them are fucking beasts. But it's they really looked, yeah. it's more about like the camaraderie. Like those are my fucking boys. And like, you know, we put the time in and on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We practice. And then Saturday you go to war for 80 minutes with the dudes next to you. And like, and then after you fucking crush a bunch of beer. And it's been good. Like it's I've been an athlete like my whole life. And like that was a piece that was kind of missing from me when yes. I was uh touring a lot and like really pursuing the band life thing and now that like mortals a passion project i have more time to like do the things that are important to me and like Mm. the other guys aren't really like well they're like athletic but they're not like sport athletes like i am so that's kind of like my way to just get away from them for a little bit (laughs) i'm laughing i also needed a thing yeah a thing for me to go do and i picked up golf and i'm laughing at going to golf and going to run dude i was thinking the complete opposite i would love to fucking play golf you know what's funny is uh a friend of mine was like talking about the masters mm-hmm. and he was saying that like um like they let amateurs in the masters if you like hit like a certain rank or like score or whatever or like Something, handicap yeah. and uh the dude who was like the lowest ranked amateur that made it into the masters he got matched up with tiger woods like he played with tiger woods and he called up his boy and he's like yo what are you doing on saturday he's like, oh, i don't know i'm just like hanging out he's like oh well like i'm gonna fucking play against tiger woods in the masters <laughs> if you want to come be my caddy so sports are fucking sick, bro. I love sports. So sick, dude. I'm like completely audio ignorant. Like just, uh, I have, I know nothing. My <laughs> ears don't work. Like people, uh, I got, yeah, I'm in the studio with bands a lot yeah, for photos or whatever. And people are always like, yeah, how does this mix sound? How does it, and it's, it sounds like a fucking song, dude. I if have, it makes you feel any better, there's a lot of musicians that are pretty audio ignorant. Too. I am audio. <laughs> so this has been like a nightmare and the camera part was great. Like getting the visual set up was so much fun. Getting the set built sure. was so much fun. 
And, and now you're trying to work on the sound. This. And this is the first time that part has ever failed. And I feel so betrayed of like, <laughs> God damn it, the one part that I love more than anything else in the universe. The part that I've spent more money on, more time yeah, operating. Baby. That is my whole life is run through that machine. That's everything, too funny. Everything I have is because of that black little She just squid. did you dirty, bro. She did me so fucking dirty, dude. And I'm, I got real trust issues now. That is... Yeah, a level. You guys of will have a talk when I leave about that for sure. I'm putting her in the bathtub, dude. <laughs> <laughs> She's getting it. No, it was, I, ni- it was nice to meet you. Um, <laughs> I'm doing like the rough math of like the see the one hour forty six. It starts at like two forty five. Yeah, something like that. So it, it adds up where I think yeah we've been going about an hour. That's about an hour gone. So I think if anything we lost a minute or two, or it happened right when I caught it and we're good to go. So I think we're good. We'll find out when I get yeah, to the computer. We'll um, but yeah, if, any, if nothing else, the audio is here. So that also exists, which is great. Um, we're in the middle of talking about rugby and how it's very different than me getting into golf and how it's nice to have things outside of music. To, Dude, I want to play pursue. golf. We should golf sometime. Okay. I'm I would down. do nine. I've never golfed on a real course. <laughs> yes. But I feel like I can. I'm a year in. So like I'm not much sure. further than What's that. your handicap? Like 5,000? Yeah, <laughs> 9 million. Yeah, I don't know. That's uh, my, funny, My dude. joke is that I use the whole golf course and that makes me a better golfer than everyone else. Nice. Everyone else uses like only one little lane of it. Sure, sure. And I'm in the woods. I'm in the grass. Yeah, yeah. I'm all, I, all You're the bunkers. You're seasoned. Seasoned. I, I get to hit the most strokes out of everyone. Everyone else is like... You got the reps, man. They swing 50 times. I swing 3,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would. I get better we bang for buck. Down. We should Down, go. Homie golf trip is the way to do this. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, out in Rochester. I'm sure. A couple in, brews, some cigars. Upstate New York know? sounds like they got some nice courses out there. Yeah, they probably do. <laughs> I'm sure. They, not that I need a nice course. The, the municipal course, the town public course is more than enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, hell yes. Anything else? Uh, I guess video games, the other thing is, uh, you said World of, not World of Warcraft. League of Legends. League of Legends was yeah. the big one. Uh, and I think Overwatch is the other big one that you're into. Yeah, we all, so these we are like, all play Overwatch a like lot. Super strategy dense games. I think they're like very like, uh, like, I'd and, say super sport oriented games. Okay. It, a lot of coordination. Both of those games like require like everybody plays a position. Yep. You know what I mean? And everybody has to like be responsible for their own duties and whatnot. And at the same time, like it requires a lot of communication. Like you need to let your teammates know when you can or can't do something mm-hmm. or when you're going to do something or when someone on the other team is going to do something. And um, it, it just goes so hand in hand with like playing sports. Yep. Like I like when I explain Rugby to my like video game friends, I break it down like in a video game term where I go, okay, well, like I'm the jungler, yeah, <laughs> in this game, and it's my job to mediate the game or something like that. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Like, yep. and then vice versa. Like, I have pretty good communication when I played sports. Like, I'm a very talkative player. I let my teammates know what's going on because like I got the headset on every night. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I think video games like itch uh, scratch the sports itch for me as well, and it's interesting to hear. Yeah, like, there's not a lot of avenues when you get older if you're yeah. not like hyper competitive and like sticking with it. I'm very glad that like rugby is a kind of sport where like they are always accepting like newcomers. There's clubs everywhere. I've actually played a couple teams in Connecticut. New Haven, Connecticut has a pretty yeah. solid team that I played a couple times. Interesting. I had no idea. Yeah, that's half an hour from here. Most people don't know, but like New England has like a super strong rugby presence. Actually, it's it's very much like rapidly growing in the U.S. One of my college roommates played so i was aware of club rugby and that was part of why this was so interesting to me of like i've, I've seen what most rugby players look like and you're not the build that it feels like most rugby players feel like they're 200 no i'm not i'm you. not my team is a pretty small team like every saturday when we go up to play another team like we we do like we don't do film together but like we yeah. a lot of teams like post like film from their games and whatnot we'll you know Scoping do our Instagram homework and whatnot together. every team we see really like, so they're a bigger team like we kind of just always got that chip on our shoulder i feel like i got a chip on my shoulder everything i fucking do but it's got. It gives you that mentality where, like, yeah, I'm like not as big or strong as or fast as these other dudes, but that just means I got to play with a little more heart than everybody. And still, like, transitioning back into it. Like I said, I haven't played in like six years, and I kind of just like wanted to stay active. And like, I'm not looking to be like a superstar A uh, yeah. player or whatever, but I do like enjoy the camaraderie with my teammates, and like, they're my friends beyond that, and like. I hope some of them come out to the show, actually. Like, what's cool is they... That's for a, a long, terrifying pit, brother. No, it is, it is. <laughs> but, like, what was so fucking cool is, like... So when I moved, they were like, where the fuck did this dude come from? And I, like, kind of explained it. I was like, oh, you know, like, I was in a band. Like, was mm-hmm. doing a lot with that. Left the band. Starting over in a new city with new friends and just kind of doing my own thing. 
And then they never fucking asked anything about it ever, dude. They Hell never yes. asked a fucking thing about the band, which was awesome, dude. Yep. Oh, it was awesome. I don't want to fucking talk about it. These I are normal, regular people. They don't I listen to that hate shit, telling dude. telling people what I do for a living. It may, I had to get a haircut the other day. I hate getting my haircut, but I, I went and I was a fucking man about it. Because oh, you're a content creator? <laughs> Yes. Wow, oh, that's you, so special. Oh, YouTube? No. Oh, what artists do you work with? Uh, well. Yeah, might... yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't want to answer any of that shit, bro. Yes. Thankfully, I've... What uh, kind of music are you guys? Oh, do you do like originals or covers? <laughs> I don't want to answer any of that shit. I think the only question that was ever asked was like, yo, you're like in a new band, right? Uh, I was like, yeah, yeah. And they're like, are you going to play shows? I'm like, mm, we'll see. This is a couple months ago. Now... I, actually, somebody asked me something. My boy Julio was like, "Oh, you got a new song coming out? You dropped that shit yet?" Like they know, but they're not yeah, like following. They just don't care. Yeah, I don't want them to care. <laughs> That's the best. Yes, I but love, if they pulled up yeah. and they got a little drunk at the show, that'd be sick. I'm um, imagining is it the haka is the all blacks thing. Of, like, oh the... yeah, yeah. We don't do that shit. <laughs> no, but we don't do that you shit. You did that in the pit, dude. No, <laughs> that... there's there's big uh, there's big like indig indigenous like heritage right, to that. Right, you know right, what right. I mean? Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, it's not even just like a rugby exclusive thing. It's, it's like a New Zealand exclusive. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if it's like if they're like Samoan or like what the actual. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know the details yeah. of it, but I know that uh, I'm white and I will not be doing the haka <laughs> anytime soon. <laughs> I'm laughing. Well, the, there's the Kublai Khan dance that everyone's mad about people doing it in the pit, and I'm laughing like that just being <laughs> to the next level of a full choreographed thing of guys doing the haka. Something about these super badass fucking heavy bands getting a little too big they're it's awesome for them and i don't want to take away from that mm -hmm. at all but people just are not familiar with the roots of the culture yes. of heavy music you know yes there was a certain band recently um that toured in america for the first maybe it wasn't the first time they toured america but you know they don't tour america super often i'm oh, sorry is this the tipping thing and never mind. no okay no um this is a mosh thing and they like made a tweet about like, oh, uh, this crowd killing shit's like out of control. Stop doing that during our sets. Where do, where do you think they were when they tweeted that? They were in the Northeast. <laughs> they would they played like Connecticut, Massachusetts, New York, and then they said, stop fucking hate moshing on each other. Brother, you can't control that. Yeah. Man. You gotta let the people you gotta let the people do what they're gonna do. You better hope you don't play Philly on the way out of That's the That's what area. I'm saying. I think yeah. they were there prior. I think they were going like up and, oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. through. Yeah. Um, you have to like respect the crowd's ability to like mandate itself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's extreme music. And I feel like there's like a lot of like hidden cosplayers in the shit now where like people like yep. are writing like this heavy music and then they're like not about it in a way. And it's like hard to like buy into it. Like mm -hmm. I think like I've kind of strayed away from listening to heavy music as a fan for certain bands because yep. I feel that way where I'm like, you don't really mean that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can't like be writing these like super badass heavy mosh parts and then tell people not to mosh. That's crazy. Yes. You know, like I grew up listening to bands like the Acacia Strain, like where <laughs> I was like literally afraid to go see them. Yeah. Because you would hear stories like, dude, this one guy got double drop kicked and his pelvis, <laughs> his whole pelvis broke. I'm like, and that's probably an underestimate of what happened. <laughs> like it was probably way worse. Yeah, more it was probably violent. way worse. I remember the first time I saw the Acacia Strain was uh, actually at a warp tour. <laughs> And like the whole, like everybody's like congregated to the stage. I forget what he said, but like the whole thing just like expanded, like huge, yeah. and then just became madness. War zone, uh, man. One of the guys in the Acacia Strain worked at the Palladium for a while, and I knew him like from being in the photo pit. I knew him as a security guard before I knew him as an Acacia Strain guy. Oh, word! And then like connecting the like savior, <laughs> I knew the protector guy <laughs> to the guy who like yeah leads the craziest crowds ever it was this wild like. Oh, I didn't know that yeah, was right? you, like a, a Batman alter ego. For That's the guy. so funny. Um, hell yes, dude. We fucking did it. We made it. Life's great. Um, go listen to Mortal Reminder. Go listen to the album. It's self-titled, correct? Yes, sir. Go listen to Mortal Reminder. It is out a couple days after this comes out. Um, go to the show. Uh, June 1st in Rochester at, what was the name of the venue? Photo City Music Hall. Hell yes. Yes, sir. Um, and where can people tell, find you online? So hopefully people enjoy listening to you. Yes. Where do they follow you online? Where can they keep up with? Mortal Reminder, New York. Hell yes. Yep. Anywhere Twitter, to watch Instagram. your Overwatch clips? <laughs> um, 
Oh, I, I stopped streaming. I kind of fell off. <laughs> I was doing it for a little bit. Every now and then, we'll do like a Mortal Monday stream where we'll hop on Twitch and we'll just like stream our games. Oh, yes. I think we want to do more of that. I we feel have, like that's the wave, yeah. We have the like Friends of Mortal mm -hmm. mailing list going and I... As time goes on, I want to do more things with that. That is such a smart. Uh, I would love to detour. Yeah, I had three I more minutes. I can't to talk believe about. I didn't uh, <laughs> yes, touch on that. I should have asked about it as well. Yes, I would love to talk about it because it seems like a brilliant way. Uh, marketing is everything, and a way to make people feel exclusive and like uh, connect with people who care. I think is the other like you. You end up with fans who really want to support the band on that list. And yeah, so for sure. You both win in that. The way we like kind of came up with it was obviously um, that idiot Mikey Sawyer like started going back and forth with us and he was getting like unhinged <laughs> on the internet and kind of gave us the idea for it and like we ran with it yeah. and I think that's why he stopped talking shit to us because like every time he says something about us it like benefits us like so hugely <laughs> so like shout out Mike I appreciate that shit. Hope we talked about the album. No for real. <laughs> Mikey, give that shit a listen. Yeah, send him a uh, fucking unlisted link. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Um, so we kind of just like started. What we did was uh, the first merch drop we did, like anybody who bought it, like we took their emails and just made an emailing list. And the idea is like, if you're going to support and you're like down like that, like you're going to get everything a little bit before everybody mm -hmm. else. And I want to like do more with that. I don't know what yet, but I have ideas that I don't want to spoil because... I want them to be like exclusive for those people yeah, that like yeah. actually care because like it is a passion project and the people that are passionate about it with us, I want them to feel like they're a part of it. Like very much like our close friends who have been in our discord, like have been so much a part of the process. Like every time we finish a song, we show it to them and they give their input. So like yeah, yeah. we've had like, you know, listen, like heavy music fans and listeners like along the way, my, um, you know, our friends, Darren, Tony, Riley, to name a few, um, are just like they are every step of the way listening to it with us critiquing they've there's even been times especially Darren who is the biggest mortal fan of all time like he's been like oh that shit sucks like <laughs> you need to go back and write that That's there's cool. one song that didn't make the cut that was his favorite song and I know he's gonna be on us <laughs> after the album drops to go back and finish that song so shout out Darren yeah absolutely that's great to keep my meow meow <laughs> to keep people looped in and yeah I think uh, I'm curious to see how you guys continue to bring value in the future and i think like yeah meetups is cool i think yeah twitch dreaming i think yeah this multimedia way of being a band i think silent planet recently lost and launched a discord that seems brilliant yeah that to, shit's like, awesome because people want to feel like they're a part of something bigger like it's yes it's not just like a band yep it's mortal reminder yes you know and what it, i mean uh, it's so much more organic than paying for a meet and greet and it's so much more real and it's just so much more genuine for like enjoyable for you guys too like i don't yeah. think I don't think anyone enjoys a meet and greet. I don't think the band, like the band gets paid well and I'm sure they enjoy that part, but like, I don't think those are good interactions for them. I no, think. it's like forced and it's like, yeah. Uh, transactionary when you're paying for something like that yeah. versus like, there's people that I see like on Twitter, like that are regular responders. There's yeah. like been, there's been moments where I'm like, I know this guy will like Mortal Reminder because he just appreciates like what I'm doing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And he's like been following my story for a bit. And I like try to like communicate often with those people and like stay yeah. in touch with them. I want them to feel like we're friends and like, cause I want them to come to shows and hang out and be friends. Like bring your fucking Pokemon cards to a show. Like we'll play, you know what I mean? Like shit like that. Like yeah. I, it's so beyond, you know, being in a band and I'm the singer of the band. Like I just don't really subscribe to that anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm really just like, I just like to create music. I like to play video games. I like to play sports. Hell yeah. If you have any similar interest to me, let's talk about it. Yep. You know, yeah. it's as simple as that. So it's like a, a free Patreon for only good. Yeah, people. that's exactly what yeah. it is. It's a free Patreon, you know, and like, but we want to like also do things where like people can be included in mm -hmm. the process. So we have like plans for that in the future. Hell yeah, dude! So to see it all come together. Congratulations on all the success. And yeah, thank so you. To see it all come Thank together. you for having me, bro. My pleasure. Thanks for coming by. Of course. Episode sixty-five from everyone. Liam Geary. We did it, my man. <laughs> <laughs>